I'm going to go through a hydrate problem just so we kind of have a, a way to look this over a couple times if you're confused by this. Um, hydrates we know are some sort of a molecule and what happens in the molecule is that there's a compound and they're surrounded by water molecules. So there's water molecules that are built right into the crystal. And it looks kind of uh, uh, interesting to see this picture. I grabbed that from the internet. So the things we're watching for is during a hydrate problem, there would be a hydrate. And that hydrate, that's the compound. And you'll see it in the, uh, something like CuSO4 dot and some H2Os. And we can call X and find out, you know, how many there's some waters that are just built into the crystal along with the copper sulfate or anything. Um, the anhydrous compound is if we heat this up and the water goes away, then what we have left over, that's the anhydrous compound. And then, of course, there's the water. Now, what we want to do is to be able to figure out grams of these guys and then change those into mole ratios so we could figure out what that value of X would be. Now, this is a picture that I found on the internet, and it is a copyrighted picture, and it really shouldn't, you know, grab it and stuff here, so I put the uh, information of the person that took that, but I thought this is just such an amazingly nice picture. So the stuff down here in the bottom, the white stuff down here, that is the anhydrous copper sulfate, and what we'd normally do would be to heat up some of the pretty blue copper sulfate, drive off the water, and it becomes this pale, you know, blue, almost white, uh, anhydrous copper sulfate and what this guy is doing is just adding the water back to it and I thought that's just a beautiful photograph so this guy does photographs for uh, uh, science books and things now the question we're going to do I found this on uh, uh, page 79 I'm sorry page 143 of the textbook uh, problem number 79 and it says Epsom salts which is magnesium sulfate with some uh, waters in there that if you heat that up to 250 degrees, all the water of the hydration is lost. So, if we have this uh, this kind of a salt called Epsom salts, people put that in their bath water, and I'm not quite sure what it's supposed to do for you, but uh, you see that a lot. So, we're saying here we're going to heat this 1.687 grams of the hydrate. So the hydrate is magnesium with some waters in there. And after we do that, there's 8 point, 0.824 grams of magnesium sulfate. So that's the, this is the hydrate. And what they're saying is that 0 0.824 grams of the anhydrous magnesium sulfate would remain. So... What we, that means for us is that if we subtract these two numbers, and I get a 3.6, I get 0.836 grams, that must be the water that was lost. Because this is the hydrate, which is the magnesium with the waters. This is just the magnesium sulfate. And so whatever left, what the difference must be the water that took off. Now what we're going to do is we want to change those into moles. So first thing is, we need to know what's the molar mass, what's the mole fact we have for magnesium sulfate. So if you have a magnesium, and we've got a sulfur, and we've got four oxygens, then the magnesium, we look it up in the periodic table, 24.31 grams per mole, uh, 32.07 grams per mole, and four oxygens be 4 times 16, 64 grams per mole. And so all together, this weighs 120.38 grams per mole of magnesium sulfate. So we're going to need that. So we go back to our problem, <clears throat> and we found out that um, we don't need this number anymore. Okay, but we do need the 0 0.824 grams of magnesium sulfate. And we know if we know grams, we can change that to moles. All I need is my mole facts, and so I happen to know now that one mole of magnesium sulfate is 120.38 grams of magnesium sulfate. Grams drop out, 
and if I take 0.824 divided by 120, I get 0, 0, 6, 8, 4, 5 moles of magnesium sulfate. Now, <clears throat> I'm using too many significant figures because this is an in-between number and I don't really mind that. I can use too many significant figures there. Okay, now the other thing we did, we subtracted and we found out that we have 0 0.863 grams of water and if we know grams we can change that to moles and water, we know water is 16 for oxygen, 1.01 for each of the hydrogens so this would be 18.02 grams for one mole of water and if we work that out I get 0 0.04 eight seven moles of water. Now that means that my hydrate has the, this many moles of magnesium sulfate and this many moles of water but these numbers are, are hard to work with so what I want to do is to get them to turn into whole numbers. So I'm going to take each of these two numbers and divide by the smaller of the two numbers which is uh, 0, 0, 6, 8, 4, 5 and same thing here, 006845. So obviously this magnesium this magnesium sulfate number, that's going to turn into one. But this number here, if we divide one by the other, I get point six point nine nine six five, which we can see is really close to seven. So bottom line is the uh, molecule here, the hydrate, is magnesium sulfate one of those dot seven H2O's. So the question was how many molecules of water occur per formula unit of magnesium sulfate and the answer is seven. I get seven waters built into uh, every you know with every crystal of uh, magnesium sulfate in order to get a crystal of uh, Epsom salts. And that's the kind of problem we do.